because the only way to to fight back against the cruel reality of this world is to basically give it the middle finger by continuing to live despite the irrationality of it Juan, and we're live. Hello. Welcome to the Meaning of Life podcast. There we go. Uh, with me here today is Rob, my good friend Rob. Uh, can you tell us a bit on who you are and what you do, man? Right. What's up? Uh, my name is uh, Robert Gantuanco. I am a graduate of uh, communication arts. Uh, I have uh, currently running a Fan Tagalog fan the page of anime and, and other animation uh, run by myself. I'm a one man crew there. I am also a freelance actor, uh, uh, voice actor, and writer at times too. And so, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much all about me. Yeah, tell us something a bit more about your fan dubbing, your uh, page. Oh, uh, right. I um, it's my dream to become a voice actor of English and. Tagalog. I, I, the dream is really North America, but I like to find some work here because I think Tagalog is a very, very beautiful language. And mm-hmm. I think that we are lucky to have our own because there are some countries out there that do not have their own language. So I'm, I'm kind of trying, I'm trying, I made that page to show people that, you know, in language, nothing. It's not, um, it's not something to be ashamed of. And contrary to, uh, to belief that the guy that dubs suck, they don't. They can be good. And yeah. I think my, I have proven that time and time again with my content. And yeah, I, I like to, I like to continue doing it for a while now. Yeah. What's your perspective on the very popular SpongeBob Filipino fa- fan dubs? A Filipino dubs? Filipino? Oh my God. You know, uh, I've only seen like a handful of episodes. And sa totoo lang, I think they're pretty good. I think they're really. They, uh, I think they're pretty good. I yeah. mean, the voice actors themselves—they really nail. Like I believe them. Like when when Patrick, especially Patrick, I think Patrick is the best voice out of everyone. Mm. But you know, there are you, what what you have with the original cast is that they have unique. They have idiolects. They have unique voices. Mm. And what the voice dubbers are trying to do in our language is that they're trying to mimic those as best they can, and it's easier said than done. So for the most part, I think they did a good job of being able to play these characters uh, that uh, make them close enough to the, to the original uh, without sacrificing too much. Because I'm pretty sure if someone tried to copy Tom Kenny or, or uh, I forgot, uh, Clancy Brown who voiced Mr. Krabs, I think you would mm-hmm. wreck your voice. Even, I, even if I tried yeah. to copy SpongeBob or, any, or Tom Kenny or any of those other guys, I would probably wreck my voice because that voice is unique to them. So for I think the Tagalog dubs is fun job are pretty good for what they are. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking of wrecking your voice, um, one particular voice actor that I think really wrecks his voice on the regular is Justin Roiland. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not even sure if he. I don't know what he, I don't know what he's doing really. Um, he switches from, from he switches from Rick and uh, Morty, right? Morty, yeah. Yeah, he switches from both. Yeah, I think it's insane. He, uh, I think he does. Uh, there, there are health practices that you do in the voice industry. I'm pretty sure he does them, or he's been told to do them because um, a lot of the time when you're when you're uh, recording multiple characters for a single uh, production, mm. uh, you don't record the characters on the same day. You record one character on a certain day and the next on the other, unless you're willing to do that kind of stuff. But why would you? Because that's really taxing on you physically, yeah. and uh, it exhausts you really. And I'm I think there. I think I saw an interview once when Justin Roiland was asked like, if he does both at the same time. He said he does sometimes, and it's it's easy for him to do it because I think he's used to it by now. Mm. Uh, he's kind of like um, Seth MacFarlane who does a lot of the voices from Family Guy. Yeah, right. I think I think he knows what he's doing well enough. Yeah. Have you ever like wrecked your voice? Um, you personally, like in oh, a lot in of the times. dubs, you do a lot a lot, a lot of times. A lot of times. How do you there like handle it? Wrong. It, which we well for first off, you, I'm doing it wrong. And when okay. I first started out, I, I when I first started out doing these dubs, I didn't have the page yet. I did it for fun, and I mm. I did um as you know I did JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and the Oro Oro as yung pinakasikat na part of JoJo. I tried doing that the first time, and I thought okay it's okay my voice isn't straining, and then I did it the second time. You have to do multiple takes, and I'm, I do multiple takes a lot. 
mm. by like the fifth or sixth take, my voice, my voice started sounding like this. Oh no! And uh, I knew I had to stop. I that was then I okay, I have to stop. And then, you know, the the what I did, I'm satisfied with what I did. But I read online that as much as possible, if you're gonna choose a character to voice, you have to make sure you can sustain it for at least four hours. It takes me about an hour or less to record my line because I'm recording short short stuff yeah. only. But if you if you can't sustain that kind of voice type, like if I'm four hours speak, though. If I'm trying to speak like this the entire time, you can do it well now. But there's a there comes a point in time in the recording where your voice quality declines because mm -hmm. you're exhausted. You don't want yeah. that. And I think I did that too many times when I was first starting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of all, actually, you mentioned it. No, um, of all the things, of all the the things you will voice, why why do you choose like JoJo? Um. Well, firstly, I think. There's no Tagalog dub of it. That's the thing. At first, the yeah. first thing I thought of was, "There's no Tagalog dub of it." And well, there's I, very few. Of, there's very few anime which have Tagalog dub, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the popular ones do. Like Naruto, mm. One Piece has yeah. one. I think Dragon Ball Z definitely has one. I think mm. Bleach has one too. The popular ones usually do, are the ones that get uh, dubbed first. But then I saw JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and it has a significantly large following here in the Philippines. And I'm mm. I'm thinking to myself. It's such a waste of opportunity. You know, I think people yeah. will flock to this as, as soon as you dub it. Then I figured, okay, you know what? I'll do it myself. It was like a Thanos moment. You're not know, like, fine, I'll do it. So, <laughs> Just, and I, and I did. Yeah. Yeah. Then. <laughs> how was it? How was the? How was the reception? How was the? How was the? Um, yeah, well, feedback. The I realized something I learned now, but I didn't realize back then was. Um, there are there are going to be characters that I cannot voice, mm -hmm. and that has a lot to do with uh, character type. You know, the thing about typecasting is it's not inherently a bad thing. In fact, mm -hmm. it helps you if you weaponize it right. Well, we'll what do you mean? Stronger, but that's, that's the word I use. I mean, um, you see, guys like hmm, let, let we were talking about him the other day. Let's let's go with a guy like Kit, Kit Harrington. Okay. Guy, Kit Harrington. <laughs> okay. Um, he has a character type, that's for sure. A broody, uh, strong male, uh, soft-spoken type. You know, like he, he, uh, he's he's not he's not very charismatic per se. He's not like a he's not like a, I will I will lead this crew into battle. He's not like Captain America mm -hmm. or something. He's a lot more soft-spoken. He's so a simp version type. of Captain America. <laughs> yeah, it's a simp. Yeah. Version. That's basically <laughs> his character. He, in this, uh, if you're gonna move, if you're gonna make a movie with a mm -hmm. character uh, that is completely different from the characters he's used to doing. Uh, he has a slim, you, he can audition for that role. Like he's, let's say a Captain America audition game. Up. If you had to choose between um, say a guy, yeah, well, let's go with Chris Evans for now. And Chris Evans or, um, or Kit Harrington. They're both, uh, they're both decent actors. You know, they're, they're, um, they're, they're okay with what they do, but by the looks of it, with the character of Captain America, who would you choose more? Right, uh, they both look handsome. They're both strong looking, but how yeah. do they how do they carry their characters is a lot different from each other. And it's the same with voice. You know, I, my vo I am mm. a tenor, so I definitely cannot voice voices that are super low, like th from baritone to bass. I cannot. Well, my 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 mistake with uh, the, my first uh, Tagalog dub of JoJo was that Jotaro Kujo's voice is definitely a bass. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my best to copy the other character's voice, Kira's voice, and uh, that was well received or decently received. If people were people liked my portrayal of Kira. Yeah. They absolutely trashed my portrayal of Jotaro because it <laughs> sounded like I was whispering, like I'm so airy. I, I make H sounds. But like, uh, I think I said a, a line something like, "I sing real small." If you hear that, like my voice kind of drowns out because I'm using yeah. so much energy to make it low, I'm losing my breath. And when you lose your breath in the recording, you can hear that. You can absolutely hear that. And I had no choice but to do I didn't notice it before, but I had no choice but to put it in the recording. And I only realized afterwards, after the comments started showing up, they were like, Hey, you're, mm -hmm. can you guys recast Jota? They don't know, they don't know as far as they could, as far as they knew. It was, was a production. Yeah, as far as they yeah. knew, they didn't know it was one guy doing the editing, the, the splicing and everything. So they were like, I saw these, this one comment that said, 
Kira is so good, but can you find a better Jotaro? I'm like, <laughs> okay, I was like, I, was, oh, no. I didn't say anything, but yeah, it was. It, it goes to show. Okay, there are characters that I cannot voice. But yeah, but it, I mean, uh, yeah. It it also goes to show how 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 wide your dub went to get these fans or these people actually these these fans of the show who have never who aren't your friends who've never heard of you and they get exposed to this it's probably the first time they've ever seen a tagalog dub of jojo probably one of yeah, their favorite probably, animes probably. yeah I and know, there's probably there's probably a bunch of have done it before but i don't uh-huh. know if i'm the first but I, I i'm proud of what i did at the very least yeah yeah, yeah. You, you, you gotta you gotta take joy in like Mm. I mean, even if I'm not the first, I'm not the best. I really take joy in doing this stuff. Even the the my first ones are were were half half decent. Uh, <laughs> I, I take pride in them. You know when you know when yeah, it's your baby, course. like when you first make something, it's your baby. Like I'm proud of this. I like this. Mm-hmm. I want to do more. So I'm do. I'm on my like. I think I'm on my eighth video or ninth video after mm-hmm. two years. Three years. Yeah. It's, it's, do it's you plan lot. on a uh, dubbing other shows? I have been. I'm trying to dub. Have you seen Attack on Titan? I have, yeah. First season, though. Yeah, seen, first season. Okay, I, I'm dub- yeah. I don't want to spoil, but I'm I'm um, I'm dubbing Irwin's charge. You don't know the context, but uh, for everyone who's gonna listen, I'm dubbing uh, Captain Ir- I, Commander Irwin's charge from season three, and uh, I'm actually doing it uh, earlier today before you before we started this call. And uh, mm. yeah, it's a I, I'm I'm planning to branch out. I I started watching Demon Slayer. I don't know if you've seen that. How do you like it? Um, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's I a, think it's it was a, over. It's okay. It, yeah, yeah. It's a typical shonen, actually. When I, it is a typical shonen. Like, when it's I okay. watched it. I mean, mm-hmm. Did you finish it? I haven't finished it. I'm like, Yung first it. season pa lang. It's still not yet done. Eh. I haven't read oh, the you, manga. You muscled through that. You muscled through that. Yeah, like, yeah, did yeah. Like, did you genuinely enjoy it? Did you muscle through it? It, uh, it kind of gets... Um, muddled down in the middle but when you start getting invested in the characters i mean that i think that's how all shonen thrive it's with their cast of characters and when you start getting invested it it gets it get it gets better through time yeah i'm just i'm just glad that uh that what's it tanjiro isn't isn't op at the start i'm just glad <laughs> yeah, he yeah. doesn't have to i'm just glad he has to has to grind through it that's not yeah I'm there's power for. scaling there's like yeah, yeah, realistic good. power scaling and you see that right there? His, his voice matches mine. I can mm. probably voice him. So when I post it on my pages, do I, do, should I watch Demon Slayer? And all my followers are like, yeah, you should watch it. We want a, we want a Demon Slayer job, Gantu. We want a Demon Slayer. Okay. And I thought to myself, do I really want to start on a new show just because I want uh, more content? And I debated with myself, you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> so let's, let's do it. it. Waiting, do it. waiting so, for that release. Waiting for that release. Anyhow. Um, getting to the meat of the podcast. Um, I want to know what you think of the phrase. You know, we were talking about um your passions, no voice acting, acting. Um, when we talk about like the meaning of life, what does it mean for you, or what does the phrase mean for you? Yeah, you know, uh, this is something that not a lot of people like to think about or talk about because it starts yeah. it starts torturing you at the back end. Like, oh, damn it, what's it the does, meaning of life? I don't, know what, I don't know what the meaning of life is. Uh, for me, I don't know. Uh, I I think I I used to think that there was one thing that everyone in this and every one person, every single person is a uh, has something they were meant to do. They have this one passion that if you find it, you will be happy for the rest of your life, and you're gonna be spending the rest of your life focusing on that, honing it. And uh, I think and I thought that would that's what made a good life. Yeah, and that's what meaning of life is that started to change when i when i went through college you know and i i I jumped i well i think we all go jumping from one desire to another like one dream to another and um i used to think that uh, we had to choose one but then i realized you know what people have strengths and weaknesses and i think we shouldn't limit ourselves to just one like, I feel like it's so narrow to and caging to be able to, to think that, oh, we all have one thing we're meant to do. I think people have strengths and weaknesses and we can choose to choose which one of those we can strengthen or hone. And 
you know, you can hone a weakness for, and I'm talking skills here. I'm talking skills in particular. Yeah. Like, let's say, let's say you're not a people person and uh, mm -hmm. you want to be able to hone that skill. And, uh, but you have to know, oh, it, it, as, you, as you're going through it, you learn if you can uh, be better at it. You, or you learn, you determine if you have a ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, a skill ceiling. I did not know I could voice act until I, I, I mean, I did, I wanted to voice act until I was like, what, six, uh, 16, 17? I didn't, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor when I was 13. Before that, I wanted to be a soldier. And that's a pretty really? far jump. And then, yeah, yeah and that's then, a um, big a change in direction there. To, it is. And I started to uh, hone that skill over time. I, I joined workshops and all that. And I realized my, the ceiling gets a bit higher for me than I had ever imagined. But I also had um, singing as a skill. And um, I found that, that the ceiling for that is a bit higher. So it turns out I can do, do, I can do these two things. Although I'm, good at, I'm, I'm probably better at one than the other. But the point is I found out that, okay, I can probably reach this high. But I can reach this one this high. But then we go to another facet of performing and dancing. Mm -hmm. I tried. And I, I got to tell you, but my ceiling is very low. <laughs> I do not. I don't how think so, I'm man? How, 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 would you, how would you determine how low the ceiling was? Um, you know, uh, the, you can, how quickly you learn things and how fast yeah. you grow from it. It takes me a lot longer, I realized, to learn how to dance properly than it did to learn, to, for me to hone my acting skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with the realizing that, okay, these are my strengths. Dancing is probably my, my, one of my weaknesses. And um, another weakness I have is visual drawing. I can't, I can't draw for anything. I can't draw to save my life. And I tried during this quarantine, I tried to learn how to draw. And mm -hmm. it gets to a point where you're just frustrated because, damn, the ceiling is this low. Are you kidding me? But you really want to learn, right? There are yeah, people yeah. who really want to learn this stuff. There are people who really want to learn how to sing, how to act, but they don't have like the... They didn't have the jump start or the the, the natural ability. Yeah, the natural ability to be able to reach a higher ceiling. But they can push that ceiling if they work for it. it though it takes a lot of a lot more time than than you would have hoped. It takes. Mm -hmm. It'll take. It probably if it takes you. I think my dad said this to me once. Like even if it takes you ten years to make a skill great, if you really want to learn that skill and if it's your passion, you will do whatever it takes as long even if just despite the time. And by then, yeah. if, besides, even if it takes a lot of time, you won't have any regrets. Mm. Meanwhile, for me, and then you learn about yourself that, okay, these are, this is my weakness. I'm not going to waste time on working on this weakness. Instead, I'm going to work on my strength to make that strength ceiling even higher than, mm. uh, than you would ever have thought before. And I think, uh, I mean, you know, I think for the most part, it, it, well, it's, 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 a, it's a cliche, but I'm basically trying to say that life is whatever meaning you give it. I don't think uh, you can scream. I think you can scream into the night, into the night sky, and then they won't answer you anything, even if you ask. And um, one of my uh, one of my favorite things about it is um, uh, we're not limited. You know, we, we, you can you can put value in your in your life in however you choose. No one is going to decide it for you, and the universe surely won't. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's that's what I like to believe in. That, uh, we make it ourselves. So what meaning have you made for yourself, man? Uh, you know, I, I think uh, you can't, I, I have yet to find that out. I'm still, um, I think you have to ask me again in 40 years, man. <laughs> Honestly. 40 years. You know, I'm not even, and something like that. You know, I think, I don't think I've experienced enough yet. Because I'm relatively, I'm still naive, I think. Yeah. You know, it, it, it I share the sentiment. Very, yeah, yeah, you, I'm still naive. There's still so much about life I don't know. I, I don't even know how to, how to build, how to you know start a business and all that. There are things that I don't know, skills that I don't know yet, mm -hmm. that I will eventually have to learn and realize uh, on my own. And uh, life is part of that. You know, again, you learn your skills and you learn your weaknesses, and then you 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 make yourself out to be the best person, the best version of yourself that you think you can be, and it, it it's whatever value you put in it. Uh, yeah you talk a lot about skills and weaknesses and strengths how do what's your advice to like people who are still trying to find what they're good at or what their skill is since you kind of you, you found your way through singing and voice acting and acting but 
How about those people who don't know? What 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 do you say to them? To, the, to those who don't know what they're what they're supposed to do, um, yeah. First off, you gotta stop thinking that there's there's something you're meant to do. Uh, again, you you gotta. There's more to there's more to one person than just one thing that they're supposed to be good at, and I think that's important because you're not caging yourself that way. That way, you're opening yourself up to a lot more, uh, a lot more things. You know, I, and I, I think the bottom line is if the determination is there with you. Uh, if, the, if the determination is there with you, I think that you would have to um, uh, focus on that instead and uh it'll carry you through like most of it you know it, if you really want to learn something you'll do whatever it takes even if it takes 10 years or or more or less and yeah it just don't just don't let don't let it get you down i think and uh, it's cliche but you know it it, it actually yeah. works you know, don't let it don't let, don't let it get you down and uh, if it you know if it brings you joy uh then you probably found something worth trying out but don't but don't let it be the only thing there's probably a, do- a dozen other things you'd probably like to do in yeah. your life. How do you know you were good at something? Like, what made you think, nah, okay, I can, this singing thing, I can do this, or this voice acting thing, I can do this. Like, what, what made you click? What, what, what okay. about that was, like, yeah. different? Uh, yeah. You know, I think I've said this before during our normal conversations when I said mm-hmm. that um, if, you fi- if you can do something, if, you, if you're good at something, and you can tell yourself, you know what, I can do this every day for the rest of my life for free. That means you're you probably found something you're really good at. You know, I think, yeah. I think if, if if you take joy in it, and if if you can do it without any pay, which is basically what I'm doing. Like I'm not mm. getting paid for any of the stuff I do, but I still do it anyway. Because it, it, I love yeah. it. I, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, one hundred percent agree, man. Like I can, for example, I'm I'm an amateur writer, but. Even if I don't get paid for it, I still do it every day. I, I, I have no quarrels with it. I I love when I produce something. Is that the same for yeah, you? Yeah. Like whenever you make a new video, oh, make yeah. a new dub? Uh, yeah, but there's, yeah, but there's also this frustration, right? Like you're, you're telling mm-hmm. yourself, you know what? I should get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I should get paid. There are true, how many times true, you true. said that to yourself? Like you're doing true, true. something creative or you're doing some work and you're not getting paid. And you just whisper to yourself, you know what? I should be getting paid for this, but I'm not. I want to get paid for this, but I'm not. But, you know, I, 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 the fact that you're still going through it anyway without assurance of any kind of uh, any kind of gratification, you, know, mm. you, you might as well do it for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever faced like um, harsh criticism or pushback that made you doubt made you like waver on your on your passions like have you uh, have you experienced those and oh, yeah. how how do you like uh, how do you like handle with that since acting and like oh what you do like singing and performing they're very public things that people see and people always comment on so yeah, what, everyone's what do a you critic, handle man. how do you handle it <laughs> everyone's Everyone. a critic um it's like um i remember this one time that made me doubt if singing was supposed to be my my calling if 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 uh being a, being a musical artist was my calling um it, it uh i think uh at that time it was um it was 2018 i think i i just joined my org inner soul and mm-hmm. then um i auditioned there you go i remember now i was auditioning and then um they made it was like the second round and they made me si- i i had the, i prepared a song with a with an instrumental and i sang it and then the director of the of the of the group told me uh sabi na in tagalog pa nga sabi niya kanina ka pa kanina ka pa ano ginagaya mo yung mga ginakanta mo gusto ko marinig yung tunay mo na boses and you know i couldn't answer him i i was shocked cuz i couldn't answer him uh and for the cuz he's right you know i for the longest time i did not have my own singing voice i would just do my best imitation of the original singer. Like I remember when I was perform, if I would perform like a Green Day song, I'd sound like Billy Joe Armstrong, mm-hmm. and that was subconscious too. Like I wasn't doing it on purpose. It's because, and then I learned eventually. I learned, and how I how I got off that hurdle, which by the way took me a while to come to terms with. Like, damn, you kind of beat yourself up over it. Like, damn, I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not a good singer. I'm I'm just a good copycat. That's it. I just have good ears. 
and that's the thing mm-hmm. I learned something about myself is that I do have good ears and that's a lot a big factor as to why I can voice act and sing because I can uh can hear I, it. I think I yeah I can hear it I just have good ears it's like a natural thing to me it's it's a it's a unique sensory thing for me that I was born with it's a talent and um yeah it made me have an identity crisis for the most part and it's funny because it wasn't even like a bad critique he didn't tell me you're shit he didn't say that mm-hmm. he, he said something he just he literally just said Gusto ko man na yung mga boses. and i couldn't sing anything he made me sing like eight songs that that uh, in that one sitting there and he still couldn't find my real voice i couldn't find my real voice did you uh, find it eventually i eventually did i i'd like to think and um Uh, it's a, again. It's a lot like character types too. You fight. You figure out along yeah. the way, no matter how long it takes, what you're honed into. Like I'm honed into. I'm a tenor and I have rock vocals, so that's what I need to stick with. I need to let out the the how I sing, uh, how I sing uh, the the national anthem. Well, yeah, you can sing the national anthem, but don't sing it in rock vocals, you know. But that's my <laughs> real voice because. You go to jail, uh, it's man. Pro- you the go national to jail. anthem, yeah. The national anthem is probably one of the few things, uh, any country, I mean. It's probably the only thing you can sing without copying anyone because you can't really associate mm. that song with a singer, but you can sing it, like, from yourself. So uh, that's prob- that probably lets out the best version, Have you the heard, cleanest version of yourself. Have uh, you heard Fergie's rendition of the American national anthem? I did not want to, but I heard how <laughs> that went. <laughs> I did not want to. Is it as oh, bad yeah. as I as I was told? It is pretty bad. You should watch it after. Like, uh, oh. you won't you won't regret it though. You'd be amused. Oh, it's it's God. not the bad that you'd get tortured. It's the bad that it's it's pretty funny bad. It's pretty funny bad. Right, right, right. I I yeah. I hope not to cringe. It's one of those things that I'm scared to cringe. You hope not to it, cringe. It's so uncomfortable. Sometimes get ready to get your hopes yeah. crushed. <laughs> But yeah. Um, that, um, yeah. The second, I think the second time that I, that I had doubts was not too long ago. Uh, I had a doubt. I had doubts that my voice acting skills were good enough because, mm. uh, again, it's just a lot to do with character types. Once again, I tried doing, uh, it just happened in Attack on Titan season two, but I tried doing a scene from there uh-huh. and I, I did, I, I stripped down the audio already. I made the script. I went, I went up here to record. And as I was trying to record my lines, I could not nail the character's voice. I couldn't do it. And I beat myself up with it because I wasted all that time. And this happened twice already. I wasted all that time stripping down this audio. It takes a lot of work. And then I couldn't do it after all. So I, did I waste my time at the time? I, I thought so back then. But then I realized, okay, now I know what, what I can't do. Now that I know what I can't uh-huh. do, I'll try my best to find something that isn't that, and which is baritone to basses. I really can't do baritones to basses. I'm a tenor guy, so I could probably voice every shonen, but I can't voice every seinen uh, hero. You know, mm-hmm. the, the the voices that they sound like this. I can't sustain this. <laughs> how I speak now is probably how I can. Sus- it's what I can uh-huh. sustain for like 10 hours. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You, get really it, you, you, voice, you get over it. You get over it. Strains it. You know, you get over it really. Uh, you you just come to learn about yourself that okay maybe this is something I can't do. Because remember, you you don't have to be able to do everything. You mm-hmm. can do everything, but you, you you don't have to strive for it. There you have there again. There is such thing as called strengths and weaknesses that everyone has. This yeah. just happened to be a weakness that I discovered late. But the point is, I discovered it, and finally, I know what to do now. And that's I think that's how people should get by over obstacles you know and this is a weakness okay i need to get over this weakness i need to find out what how i can bypass this weakness and you get resourceful you get really resourceful over time you know when when you're faced with these things in school alone man i mean how many times have you have you have you messed up and then you 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 find you Too found many. your way you're right you find you found your way uh just to be able to uh get through Thesis alone is one big example, but you got other mini projects, right? Like that, mm. that, that, that kind of uh, setting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kahit kahit ano paraan, like, uh, legal or illegal. Just kidding. Legal Just kidding. or illegal. Ill- well, <laughs> depends what you see as illegal. <laughs> it's, it's, Within the bounds of the Is pirating software? Hand. Is pirating software illegal? I don't think the school oh. cares. 
you you the assume school. the school doesn't pirate also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, you're right. I didn't even. Yeah. That's true. That's true. As a com art student, you you should Was like it? you should like have an inside knowledge. I mean, <laughs> even uh, uh, I'm not gonna give names, but even even in my Ooh. course, yeah, people people really share. Like whenever you ask in a group chat, but hey guys, can I have a copy of Adobe Illustrator? And then someone almost always has a Google Drive of it. Yeah. Like yeah. Of, an, of an installer. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I didn't know. This is like a network. It's like a black market, but you're not Does paying I for not? anything. Does DLSU give? Uh, we do not give. But oh, you do no, have, no, in we... our course, they do not give. But in in um, in in one of our rooms in school San Miguel building we have a room that's dedicated to editing editing big mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and um, yeah that has editing software but but you have it, to be it's there. free to use you have to be there you have to go to school just to do it you know that's the thing uh, yeah. why would you do that if you, if you need to stay at home right there are many reasons for you to stay at home so why would you go all the way to school just to there edit? are many reasons for you to stay at home most relevant now <laughs> most, most relevant now, relevant now. So let's pivot into oh. like, I know, like uh, your beliefs. Like, are you a religious person? Because sometimes the meaning of life is like muddled in philosophy and religion and what people believe in. I don't. It's so, hard to separate the two, really. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. No. So, are you like religious and do you believe in like some higher being, some higher something, or something out there that is beyond our reach? Do you, Do you buy into that? Do you like debunk that in your mind? You know, uh, you, I, I, we've, I think we've known each other long enough. You knew me when I was hyper religious. You mm-hmm. knew me when I was hyper religious, uh, and obviously that implies that I'm not religious anymore. But the question that do I believe in a higher being? I want to say I'd like to believe in one because mm-hmm. life is so much mean? better when you think. I mean, think about it. Life is so much better when you think about there's someone up there like what uh, not. Well, not, not not necessarily watching over us, but the cause of everything. If you if you if you if you acknowledge that there's a cause for everything, that none of this everything has a reason, uh, you kind of feel better. It's it's much more. Uh, it's a good feeling to feel. You know, like okay, this this life has a point. Everything has a point. There's a reason for this that we don't understand. As compared to there is no God. There is no reason for us being here everything is just a coincidence it's so defeatist yeah. and pessimistic that it, it it really just makes you depressed i'm i when i uh when i stopped being religious and that was around after after high school i graduated high school i i i bumped into i, I bumped into articles and mm-hmm. my brother my brother was taking a philosophy class and he gave me some of his readings and i, I just read through it and i'm just like damn Every, my whole world just came crashing down and I'm not even joking when i say uh i had an existential crisis because be me like that a hyper religious person uh that has preached to people about about catholic god has led catholic prayers and and uh fervently been to church you know i like go- i i i i remotely uh, i at the very least uh appreciated going to church because you know uh, food for the soul, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then when I found, when I read those readings my brother gave me, it, it all just came crashing down. I just re- I realized how much I disliked uh, going to church because I was lazy. And uh, the only part I really listened to at church was the homily. That's it. I literally show up to, to church back then just to listen to the homily. Yeah. And uh, I kind of ignore most of it. I fall asleep through most of it. And, you know, and... and um, I, I don't I want to th- I want to say that I believe in a higher being but it's such wishful thinking on my part. I don't want to be disingenuous, you know? Like it's it's such a cop. I don't want to be such a cop out where I say, "You know what? I'm going to believe in a god just because it makes me feel better about the world and what I live in, the cruel world that I live in, that everything happens for a reason." But at the same time, there are so many arguments that counter that. So many. Yeah. So I can't really pinpoint what I truly believe in, but I will say this that it's a never ending de- it's a never ending debate and uh I actually don't like talking about this because it's a never ending debate there is no one no one is going to give in no matter mm-hmm. which side you're on no one's going to give mm-hmm. in when you have this kind of conversation and um, yeah. it wasn't I had there was a time and uh there was a time that I, I wanted to shoot myself I'm, that that's no joke I mean when your whole world goes crashing down like that you just think to yourself does life even have meaning anymore 
does 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 any of this have any meaning anymore? And you're you're stuck with the, this kind of uh, thinking that uh, uh, everything you do is pointless. It wasn't until I I think it was the following the, my my first year of college where I encountered uh, yeah. you know Albert Camus right the the philosopher Albert mm-hmm. Camus. What, he's what? probably my favorite philosopher. It's Camus. I thought I always thought it was Camus or something. It's, Camus. He's French. He's French. Camus. He's, I, th- I always it, he's Camus because I think it's a uh, French. Uh, that's yeah, why yeah. it's pronounced Camus. Yeah, but Albert Camus. Mm-hmm. Albert Camus um, basically said, uh, "Don't kill yourself because you're gonna lose. You're giving in. If you kill yourself, that means you've lost. Uh, basically, the game, the game of life, where." Um, life is inherent. He he says that life is in life is pointless. It's absurd uh, that uh, as human beings we try to ration. We have this need to give order to things, to give things reason, to mm-hmm. give things rationality. But the mm-hmm. world is inherently irrational. There are things that there's a finite number of things that uh, we as humans can only understand. The rest is incomprehensible. That's what he said basically, and. When I was going through that phase of uh, of crisis, I read that when he said, don't kill yourself. This isn't verbatim, but he basically said, don't kill yourself, otherwise you lose. You've lost it. Um, you know, well, by the way, if, if I always, uh, one of the arguments I always bring up to myself is that if there is a God, he probably doesn't care about us. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I, it, that's something I come to terms with. Like, you know what, if there is a God, at the very least, he probably doesn't care about us. We're probably like a sandbox to him where he just watches us. Like he's created us, but he's w- just watching things unfold. He's not really hands on with it. He's just watching us. Uh, in, and I think, you know, with that in mind, even if uh, God doesn't care about us, I can give the universe the middle finger just by continuing to live. Because if I lose, if I if I kill myself, that's just admitting I lost. I lost to the irrationality of this world. But I don't want that. Besides, uh, I always thought to myself, dying is boring. Because it, it, it's mm-hmm. probably just black to me. It's probably just black. When you're dead, yeah. it's probably just black. And that's so boring compared Actually, to life. My, what I think of that is like, you you never knew or you don't know what what it was before you were born. Like, it's it's yeah, nothing. Yeah. It's not even, it's yeah, not yeah, even, yeah. it's not a glimpse, not a, it's just, bam, you, you're born yeah. and then you have these memories. And then I think... I'm not sure, of course, no one is sure, but what makes us stop to believe that the end of life is different from the beginning of life? If we were not born yet and then we are snuffed out of existence. Um, it's a puzzle, really. It's a puzzle. It's an unsolvable puzzle because once yeah, you yeah, find out the answer, you can't go back to tell the tale. It's, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, too. Because, uh, excuse me, because... um. Uh, even if uh, even if you think about how the world began and everything that's come to this point, there mm-hmm. is a po- there was a possibility where you and I could have not existed. Oh yeah, we're for basically sure. right. We're, we could have not existed, and that helps the that helps with the idea that you know what this life is just coincidental. It's 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 point. It's utterly pointless. Which brings me to the which brings me to my like statement sorry that. Life is what you give it. Life is life is life. Meaning is what you give it. We all have our strengths or weaknesses, and then we hone that, and we we build ourselves continuously until the which point the point of our death. Because it's a lot better than killing yourself. Killing yourself is um. Uh, I would I would it would say is definitely the the biggest admittal of uh, failure uh, as a person. You know what? I I don't think this life is worth living. There's no point to everything. Uh, this is this is of of course under the assumption that you just think life is pointless. This is under the assumption that you have mental health issues. That's a different story. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, if I came to that point, and I, I gotta tell you, it was so bad that I don't. I never want to come back to that. And I'm quite satisfied with the idea that there probably is a god, but he just doesn't care about us. And it 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 uh it helps you think to the okay. At least we know that there's a cause for this whole, the whole universe. But I don't like to think of him as God. I don't like to. I, I mean, I don't like to praise it, it as God, because mm. for all we know, he could just be like he could what just be like f- a ball, uh, like a 
like a he couldn't be humanoid, you know? There's a, a ball of energy, humanoid. something like that. He's just a ball of energy, something like that. He could be like yeah. that. He could be like a an an uh, a huge eye, uh, invisible eye in the universe. You know, we it's Sauron. We don't really know. We we only think he yeah he could be he could look like Sauron for all we know. He, uh, in fact, you know my my favorite my favorite um, apparition of the angel is that mm-hmm. it? is that the, the 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 energy ball thing with the spirals. And then they yeah. all the spirals have eyes. Have you seen that? I think that's I don't my think favorite. I have. Uh, uh, you should look that up. Like version, I forgot what version of an angel that is, but I think it appears in the Book of Revelation, the Catholic Bible. Mm. So it's kind of it, it. I find it cool. Like you know what? Uh, the only reason we think that he's that God is humanoid and is a guy for all of is because off, we are human. Is because of paintings. Yeah, paintings that in media back in the day they portrayed him as a white bearded man, and uh, he could be a woman for all we know, man. Like honestly, he could be a woman. Yeah, for all we know, he could be androgynous. For all we know, yeah, I, mean, I highly doubt he was white because he was in like, he 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 lived in, like the Middle East, right? He's like, yeah, he probably looked. Well, if if God favored the the Middle Eastern nations back in the Bible, I mean, he probably would look Middle Eastern, wouldn't he? But that, again, we can't really prove that anything. Hmm. Even if I say he probably looks like a ball of energy, we still can't prove that. And um, let alone hyper, his existence. Hyper religious people would contradict you on that point. What would they say? You think? I don't know. Like uh, the Bible is historically accurate, <laughs> as some yeah, of you them know. Would say. I, yeah, they, I just remember. You know, I don't like. To, this is the kind of conversation. Like I said it before. Like earlier, uh-huh. like, this is a conversation I don't like having at all. Not even yeah. with. Not even honestly, not even with you guys. Like this, you know, I only talked about because you were like, "Hey, let's pick a podcast." You know what? Fine, I'll, mm-hmm. let's talk about it. We can. This is a nice environment for it. But in a normal conversation where there's no recording, I wouldn't want to talk about this stuff because first off, you're gonna step on someone's toes. Yeah, you are. You One are. way or another, you're gonna step on someone's toes. Like no matter how silly you guys can get, you're gonna step on someone's toes. And it's quite taboo, especially where we live, to talk about God in this way. In a higher mm. being, you know, my 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 mom would always, when my mom my parents found out that that that, that mm-hmm. uh, my brother and I aren't religious anymore, they freaked yeah. out like so bad. But they uh, they were my mom was always going on about, and my dad also actually, he was also always going on about there is a higher being. Like he, they would always say, the this universe is the way it is. You think that? Do you honestly think that? Do I honestly think that there is no reason for it? Like the design of everything. And I think this is the mm. intellectual design argument where these things are all coming into play. Like all the things are connected because someone designed it so, because God deemed it so. And uh, the other argument they give me is that uh, to to argue that there is no God would, to disc- would be to discredit all the beautiful things that are happening in life and all the meaning that has been put into it. And to that I say, isn't that kind of wishful thinking? I mean, you basically... Mm. They're basically trying to rationalize God's existence just to make sense of the world. And this is what Camus said about that. He called it philosophical suicide, where you submit to just irrational, you submit to flimsy arguments for the sake of making sense of the world. You know, and he called that, he called it philosophical suicide. And he, again, he would always say, just admit that the world does not make sense, but we are, we will, but damn it, we will continue living it because. Uh, screw the world for what it is. You know, I was born into it. So I'm not gonna kill myself just because I was born into this cruel world. I will live against it, the myth of Sisyphus. I'm sure you know who that what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. That that that's that rolling the boulder it. endlessly. Yeah, you have to imagine Sisyphus happy, which I think is uh one of the one of the, one of the cleverest things that mm. I've ever heard for for to say about a guy that's been pushing a boulder for all eternity. You know, we're ba- we're all Sisyphus, one way or another. Uh, this world is irrational, and none of it makes sense. But you know what? I'm just gonna say, I believe that there's a higher being, but he doesn't really care. He just watches us for some reason. He gets off on it. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, he gets off on it probably. I guess. I mean, fetish, how would, it, it, it's no different from when you're playing a, a sandbox video game, mm-hmm. like uh, I don't know, Sims. And, and you're you just, just decide to these flood people. it. Yeah, you decide to flood it, you know. But that's a different argument too. Like uh, we're not even talking mm-hmm. about how, why, why, why I don't think, 
the specifics of why I didn't think God existed, like why I made yeah. my why I made my turn to the dark side, you know. The dark side, quote unquote. The dark side, quote unquote. But yeah. since you talked about Sisyphus, my my thoughts on that was like, um, if I could really talk to Sisyphus, I tell him since since he pushes the boulder endlessly on to to, to go on top of the mountain, you know, every day he should just chip away at the boulder so that one day it breaks. Um, kind of like what Andy Dufresne did in Shawshank Redemption, if you've watched that. But oh, yeah, I remember. I've watched that, man. I think it's an al- analogy to life. I mean, we can't expect uh, life to agree with what we do. We can't expect it to bend over and just one day have the boulder rolling to the other side of the mountain. I think it's a, it's a gritty process of chipping away at the rock. Like, every day is just another chip. Every day is another voice strain for you to get better. Every day is another yeah, word yeah. that we write. That's a good point. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good argument, yeah. It's a hard life. Like, the, like the boulder is hard, but it, that doesn't mean we can't, we can't get through the mountain. Do you, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you think that there's a higher being out there? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. In resignation, yes, because we can't really prove uh, one way or the other. We can, right? yeah, we can prove or disprove. That's what's annoying about it. Yeah, really, super that's what's annoying. annoying about it. That's why all answers are technically accepted because there is no set definite answer. So every side would have like, oh, I'm correct because you can't prove this, or I'm correct and you can't prove this. But in resignation, I do believe there is some higher being because if it's just a matter of preference, I would prefer there it to be a higher being because w- what you said yeah i mean i think easier. everyone would prefer it's easier it's to live life to when, you, when you than, know what it is yeah but it, like, again you're, yeah. we're kind we're kind of dismissing all rationality when we do that i mean the only I, the, the, that's why i came to the conclusion that the only rational possibility for there is to be a god that he's not perfect that he's probably an asshole that doesn't care and uh, that makes much more sense at least at least i know there's a mm-hmm. god right <laughs> even if he doesn't care at least i know there is one there is a reason for all this, at least, as compared to the having no reason. But I'm quite comfortable having no reason whatsoever because Camus put it, as Camus put it, just give life the middle finger. I, I'm quite satisfied. I would I would gladly give life a middle finger. So in like ending this podcast, you know, we've rambled on. Uh, before we like separate ways, um, one thing I'd like to ask you is, What's the most important lesson you've ever learned in life? Or what for you is like the one thing you think everyone else should know, but they, uh, but you think like people don't focus much on, um, for you. Um, hmm. Top of my head, really. I think, um, yeah, go ahead, man. You, uh, take, take responsibility for, for things. I think a lot of us are too afraid to own up to mistakes Mm -hmm. and that, you know, when you own up to mistakes, you don't have to be so hard at yourself either. You can admit them and be strong about it. You can be strong when you, when you admit that you've made a mistake and also, and also that there is a difference between committing, um, what's that Tagalog? You know what I mean? There's a difference between the two and, uh, you can you can almost associate that with hurting someone or making a mistake that cost you something, and um, the point is you you just you gotta stop pulling the victim card and take more responsibility for the things that you've done because only then will you actually learn uh, when from your mistakes when you acknowledge them. I mean, yeah, you know, cliche. You when you acknowledge your mistakes, you will be able to figure out what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are. And that's what I've been saying since the beginning. Like you, you, everyone has strengths and weaknesses. You hone them. You, you figure out what they are over the course of your life, and you never really truly stop. You know, it, it's it's always, it's always continuous for everyone. And uh, yeah, I think I think people should not be afraid to to own up to that. Yeah, definitely. Sharing the same sentiments. Um, responsibility is a scary thing for most people because it begets taking accountability. It begets um, having your shoulders bear the brunt of the failure or the success. You know. Um, yeah, when you when you try to when you yeah, try to sure, brush ahead, it off as like someone else's fault. When you try to brush it off at someone else's fault, or you put the blame on someone else or something at its abstract, like you relate to work because of the traffic. 
but you know you could have just said there's a way to do it you know when you when you when you come home late to work you could you could say uh sorry na na traffic ako di ko alam and na yeah. traffic ako na late ako yan. or you could say sorry hindi ko na anticipate yung traffic nakalimutan ko that w- one line the second line is much more powerful than the other because it, you're clearly taking responsibility like okay i forgot i'm sorry i forgot to I forgot to take account for the traffic as compared to na traffic ako. Diba? Parang halata mo pa lang dun eh. Like, there's, there's a difference between the two statements. And people need to do more of that. That way people are less annoying, you know? Like how many times have you had to work with group yeah. members and they said, ah, sorry, pari, mabagal internet ko. Oh, too many times. Or something <laughs> like... Oh, sorry, bro. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot. Sorry. sorry, bro. I had errands, bro. <laughs> I sorry, sorry, bro. bro I was wait. out. I can't help with the yeah. PowerPoint. And you know, a lot of it has to do with how they say it. When they say sorry, sorry bro, bro, my errands pala ako. <laughs> you could just say sorry. Ah, sorry, hindi ko na ano, hindi ko nagawa. I'll make up for it right now. I'll do work for it, man. <laughs> But no, no, it okay. it ends at sorry, bro. It it opens and ends at sorry, bro. With sorry, bro. No, uh, no, <laughs> no accountability. Whatsoever. Yeah. My God, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's the shindig. That's the shindig.